Hello everyone, welcome to ServiceNow Pragya. My name is Kamlesh and today we are going to look into an issue that we all have experienced as a ServiceNow developer. Sending and receiving of email in PDI. So as you all know that in, in ServiceNow PDI, sending of email and receiving of email is disabled. Now, the reason that ServiceNow states for this is that there were a lot of spamming that was being done using ServiceNow PDI. So in order to stop that, ServiceNow has disabled this feature. And if we go to developer.servicenow.com, there is a blog for this. Uh, the title is Changes to Sending Emails from PDI. So here in length, uh, the details are given why they have uh, disabled it. And is there anything that we can do about it? So uh, what they say is that sending of email should not be an issue. Why? Because uh, email logs are getting generated. So you can preview your email from there. That is fine. So, but what about inbound email? What if I have inbound email action and I need to test this? So that is not there. I couldn't find any relevant document where they have given any workaround for this. So first of all, is there any workaround? And uh, I have seen that, yes, there is workaround that you can try. So let me tell you the workaround first. So if I go to emails. So what you can do is you can go to all emails and you can take any email that is available out of the box whose target is blank. So you can open it. Let's take an example for this one. So uh, mostly inbound email action happens to be subject oriented. So let's say you have subject based inbound. So let's say delete user. This is the inbound email action I have. I save it. So what you have to do is uh, change the type to received subject as per your use case, save this. And then you get a button called reprocess email. So click on this. What it will do is it will see that its type is received. So it will trigger an inbound email action. So if I click on all again, uh, this is the one. So you can see uh, incident got created. That means inbound email action create incident got triggered. We can find this in log, right? So this is one way. Uh, you can also create an incident rather than depending on uh, existing uh, emails. You can create new. Uh, you can simply put your uh, subject here, whatever you want, and then you can uh, save it. So as soon as you save it, your inbound email action will trigger. So this is a workaround. What about the solution? Do we have any solution for it? Yes, we do have. So what we can do is what ServiceNow used to give you out of the box, you can create that for your own. So in order to do that, first you need to understand how sending and receiving of email works. Previously, when ServiceNow used to give you how, I mean, why it was working, what was that ServiceNow gave you, right? So uh, first you need to understand how this sending and receiving of email works. So for sending or receiving an email, the very first thing that you need is an email server. So all the emails resides on the email server. And if you want to receive an email into ServiceNow, you need to connect with that email server. And then you need to download emails from that server. This is how receiving of email works, right? So previously ServiceNow used to give you his email server, but now since it's not there, you need to use yours. So for this example, what I have done, I have taken a Gmail account. You can use your existing Gmail account. Uh, what I have done is I have created a new Gmail account dedicated for inbound outbound, right? So you need a Gmail account and you need a service now instance. This is a prerequisite. Okay, now how can we do it is uh, go to email accounts module. And if you have noticed in your older PDIs, there used to be two accounts here, ServiceNow POP3 and ServiceNow SMTP, right? P3 
POP was used for downloading, receiving the email, and SMTP was for uh, sending the email out of the instance, right? So what used to be out of the box before, you have to do it now. So let's go to new, <clears throat> sorry, and give it a name like service now POP account. Type is POP3, that is the third version of POP we are using. And uh, authentication is of type password. Now the server of your email. So in case of Gmail, server name happens to be pop.gmail.com. So this is, uh, this is Gmail email server address, right? Now let's go to the username. Now, username is your uh, email address. So my email address of Gmail account is my PDI mail and the day gmail.com. Now the password. Now this password is not your Gmail password. It needs application password for your uh, Gmail, right? So this password you will have to generate. And how we generate is we go to myaccount.google.com. So this is the URL, myaccount.google.com. So when you go in here, you need to go to security. Inside security, scroll down and go to sign into Google. Now, the very first thing that you need to do is you need to activate two-step verification, right? So in my, it's already activated. Let me deactivate first. Turn off. Turn off. So if you have activated uh, two-step verification in your Gmail, that is fine. If not, then you will get something like this, two-step verification. You need to enable it first. So when you go here, it will say, uh, get started. Uh, you need to put your mobile phone number here. So let me do it in another screen. So let me put my mobile number. And then I need to click on next. <clears throat> so it will send a code on, on the mobile number given. So I have received it. So my password, my code is G hyphen nine five two three eight three. Next. So once you put the correct code, this page will come, which says uh, turn on. So once I click on turn on, it turns on the two-step verification. Now, again, I need to go back to the Google account security. Now, once two-step verification is enabled, one option will come that is called app passwords. This is what we need to generate. So click on this. So app is mail and device. I don't have a device. I'm doing this with service now. So this is just uh, for the reference so that when you check in future, what are the app passwords you have generated? You should get to know that, okay, this I have done for service now. So generate. So this is the password that you need. I will copy this and we'll go back to service now in the password, put it and port number now the port number for uh, pop is 995 so it should be 995 now save this and test the connection okay it is taking time Connection failed, EOF on socket, why is that? Okay, uh, the security I have not chosen, it is SSL. It should work now, save, test the connection. Connection successful, that means my service now was able to connect to my email server using my authentication. Okay, now I need to activate this. 
since it's working it's activated now one more step i will go to email properties and i will enable receiving of email so email receiving enabled yes save it so now my instance is enabled for downloading emails from this email server so there are uh, four emails here expectation is in my instance also i should be receiving this email so let's go to emails okay so let's wait for service now to connect with it i think it takes 3 minutes of time to poll uh, the email server so by then it should be working Okay, so let's check again. Uh, this is the email account. It is active. Properties, email receiving is enabled and saved. Okay, so configuration wise, we are good. Now let's wait for this to happen. And uh, so if, so why uh, it takes some time. So if you go to properties, huh. Says underscore properties. And if you go to star email, then it, it waits for three minutes, right? So let's see. And also, if you are using an existing Gmail account, if you are connecting this with your existing Gmail account, you need to make sure that your Gmail account is enabled for uh, POP. And how you do it is you go to the gear icon and you go to see all settings and you go to forwarding and POP IMAP. And here your POP should be enabled. If it is not, you need to do, you need to choose either of two options. First is enable POP for all mail. This means that if you check this, and save this, what will happen? All the email, all the email means from the start, whatever email is there in your server from the very first day, it will download all those emails into uh, ServiceNow. And if you go with this option, email for mail takes that arrives from now on, that means once after you have enabled it, after that, whatever email will be coming, that will be uh, downloaded by ServiceNow, right? So you have to make sure that your POP is enabled for mails. Okay, uh, let's check. Okay, so we can see that all uh, four emails that was there in my email inbox. So all those uh, emails, four emails is received now, right? And it triggered create incident inbound email action as a result of which incident got created. Fine. So, uh, that means uh, inbound is working now, right? Email uh, is being received by the instance. Now let's see how we can enable it for outbound. So again, we have to go to uh, email accounts, email accounts. And this time we will be creating SMTP, that is a simple mail transfer protocol for sending email out of service now. So we will give it a name, service now, SMTP account, right? And the type is going to be SMTP. Authentication is password. For uh, sending the email, the server address happens to be SMTP dot Gmail dot com, right? And Then comes the user label. So this is the name that will be uh, shown when sending the email. So let's say I call it IT service desk, right? Then the user email, it's again my email address, my PDI mail and the rate gmail.com. And password, I think we already copied. If not, let's do it again. Copy. 
So is that here? So this is the password. Now from so this is going to be this on this one. Okay, security is again SSL and the port number for SMTP is 465. 465. Let's save this. Test the connection. So the connection is successful. That means we are able to communicate, uh, we are able to transfer the email from by, to the Gmail server, right? So we will active this since it's working. Save this. Go to the properties not this property, email properties. Let's enable this and save this. Okay, so now let's create a user for checking out one. So let's create a user. Or let's rather than creating new users, let's use an existing user. I think I've already done this. So this is the user. I have given my email address uh, to this user account. So we will use this. So let's go to any incident. So let's say this is the incident. So I will assign this ticket to this user. Okay. So expectation is that out of the box uh, notification is there that if any ticket is assigned to any user, uh, email gets triggered. So let's see uh, emails created on today. So this is send ready. Send ready. So let's wait for this to change to sent. So expectation is that once this is uh, the state, the type changes to sent, uh, email will be received in my email account. So it is sent. Let's go to email. Let's go to sent. It should be here. Okay. So I can see that in sent, this email uh, is available, right? And this is sent to the email address. Let's verify on my another email address. Yeah, I have received it. Okay, now, uh, so this is uh, email sending working now. So what if I have to test my inbound email action? Uh, where will I send my email? So what you need to do is in order to test your inbound, you have to send all your emails to this Gmail account, which you have integrated with, right? So if I have to test my inbound, what I will do is I will send email to this email address copy. So let's test one, let's compose. So on this email, I will send uh, test inbound email action, right? Hello, this is a test email, right? So let's send this, send. Okay, so expectation is that when this email comes here, uh, let's refresh. So when this email comes here, this email will be downloaded by ServiceNow because we have already connected it with POP3. So I have received this email. Now let's go to ServiceNow. And let's see, within three minutes of time, it should receive it. Okay. So, uh, so this is uh, how you, uh, enable sending and receiving of email in your PDF. Uh, let's see if it's raised yet, not yet. Okay, by the, by the time it happens, 
Uh, there are a few properties. And uh, let me share with you. If you go to properties, is it open? No. So there are a few properties related to uh, sending of the email, SMTP. So uh, you should be aware of it. Like suppose if your email server is down for a couple of minutes or say for a uh, few hours, then it is not like that email is lost. Why? Because uh, there is a property called defer retry IDs. So if there is any error that has occurred starting with four, like 421, 450, 451, 452. So these uh, are the error codes, which basically means that server is not available temporarily, right? So in that case, service now tries to resend the email. Okay, so this is a this is an interesting property. Now another property is this one where if your uh, error code mostly starts with 500, so that's a server error where the where either uh, the email ID that you have uh, used do not exist or that server do not exist. So if there is any server uh, related error uh, in that case, if there is error code in these, then in that case, service now will not try to resend the email, it will fail, right? But if your server is uh, unavailable for some uh, time in that case, it will keep trying to resend that email until it's not sent completely. Okay, so I think it should be received by now, created on today. Okay, so we can see that we have received this email, right? And the recipient is what? The email ID I have integrated with. Okay. Uh, preview. Yeah, so this is the email that I sent from my Gmail address. So this is all about how you can enable sending and receiving of email using your PDI. I hope this helps. Uh, I hope you learned something new. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, see you soon in another video. Have a good day.